Hi guys. I'm a little early um, as I like to do because I just want to try to make sure that everything is working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my iPad is picking me up so that I can see if there's any comments from you guys. Um, it is super, super cold here today. Uh, when I woke up at 5.30, it was minus 17. That is not um, an error. That is what my phone said, minus 17. I don't know what it is now, probably like maybe minus 12. So, ah, it's cold. So, when you guys start getting on here, if you could just leave me a comment, tell me where you're from, if you can hear me okay, give me a thumbs up, a heart emoji, uh, something so I know that um, people are here. And, um, yeah, and then maybe we can get started. So, last week I told you about my cataract, so I'm still very excited to get that fixed. Um... It's funny because it almost seems like it's worse now, and it probably isn't, but now that I know what it is and I know that it's going to be fixed, I find that I really am struggling trying to see. So, yay for getting that fixed. Um, here's a funny little story for you. Um, hello, Chris. Let's see, chilly Minnesota. Oh, I suppose. Is it like really cold there also? Because it is brutally cold here, and we have so much snow. We have so much snow that the piles along the sides of the driveway, you know, you scoop the snow off, you pile it up on the sides of the driveway. Hello, Lisa. Um, my husband's a, he's a stickler about having the driveway clear, which that's fine with me. So we're always out there shoveling the driveway. I, the piles on the side of the driveway are as tall as my 14-year-old son. We have so much snow here, and it is so cold. It's just brutal. So um, I'm tired of shoveling. Uh, my husband's tired of shoveling. My kids are tired of shoveling. We're all tired of shoveling. And of course, it's only February in Wyoming, so we could be in for a couple more months of um, winter weather. So smile. It's winter. So anyway, um, here's another little funny story for you guys. I um, My husband's working the night shift, so when I get up in the morning, I try to be quiet, as quiet as I can, and, you know, I tiptoe out of the room and I close the door so that, you know, as the kids are getting ready for school and whatnot, he's not really hopefully disturbed too much by that. Well, normally I will go, you know, I'll, if I'm going somewhere, I will take clothes out of the room with me, you know, other than pajamas, so that if I need to leave, I can put clothes on. Well, I forgot to do that this morning. So I was panicking. I'm in my pajamas trying to get ready for this. And I run, <laughs> I have a spare room down here in my basement where I have like, you know, maybe clothes that don't fit me so well, clothes I don't really like, clothes that are like summer or spring. So uh, that's what you get today is me in a um, shirt from the closet that I don't always use. So yeah, but it's all good. At least I have clothes on and not pajamas, right? Okay, so there's a few of you on there. Please leave me a comment. Let me know um, where you're from. I always like to know that. And also, while you're at it, um, I believe, if I'm checking my iPad here, there's a little button right below what you're watching that says share. So please share the video to um, wherever you want to share it to. It would be awesome. Hello, Wendy. How are you? Um, share the video for me. That really helps me out to get some more people watching. And um, I'm just trying to reach as many people as I can. I try to teach as many people as I can uh, tips and tricks that I've learned over the past 15 years of being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Um, put that away. Um, so yeah, so please share it. And last week I did a drawing for uh, those people that shared the video. I was gave away, I'm giving away the cards that I made last week. Here they are. All the cards that I made last week. Hello, Vicki. Thank you for sharing. Um, and so I did a drawing. I had one of my kids draw the name, and it was Jerry Stringer who uh, did win the cards. So, Jerry, please send me an email, barb at barbstamps.com, with your mailing address, and I will get these out for you um, today or tomorrow. So, yay for Jerry. I'm going to put those up there. Okay. Well, I think I've probably babbled on long enough. Hello, Donna. I was just talking about how flippin' cold it is here. So um, you can certainly relate. Donna is my neighbor. I'm just a couple blocks away. So um, if it's minus 17 at my house, it's probably minus 17 at her house too. <laughs> All right. So, oh, a couple of uh, some housekeeping items. Uh, number one, if you happened to get in on the first reservation window for the <gasps> Stamparatus tool... You should have received an email this morning letting you know that your tool is in the warehouse at Stampin' Up! and it is ready for you to order it. So all you need to do is to log into your online account. The Stamparatus will be in there. It's $49, so you could add uh, one other small little thing. Thank you for sharing, Wendy. Thank you for sharing, Lisa. 
um, you can add one more small little item to your order and then you can get a celebration item anyway because I mean, if you're just getting the Stamparatus, it's $49 and the $6.95 shipping. So to add one more thing, snail refill and ink refill, it's not going to change your shipping at all. Um, and then you will get a free celebration item. So again, those of you that were in the very first reservation window, you should get your emails. You should have your emails already letting you know that you can go to the store and order your Stamparatus. So that is very exciting. Um, also, I did want to mention to you guys, if any of you have wish lists in um, excess of nine, see, $99, um, you might want to consider joining my team of demonstrators. Now, being a demonstrator does not mean that you have to do what I do. You do not have to Facebook Live every week. You do not have to do home parties. You do not have to do anything except buy your supplies at a discount. So, um, right now, the kit during celebration is $99 plus tax for wherever you live you get $125 worth of items in the kit. Plus you get a paper pumpkin kit. You also get two free stamp sets of your choice. Um, any stamp sets in the main catalog or the occasions catalog with the exception of celebration items or host items. So if you're interested in that at all, let me know. You can send me an email, barb at barbstamps.com. We can chat and um, yeah, so it is a great deal. $125 worth of stuff for only $99. Hello, Shelly, and hello, Sherry. All right, put the Stamparatus away. We've talked about joining. Um, my host code for the month is on my blog. It's going to be on the screen when I flip the camera over. Hello, Mary Ellen. We were talking about how flipping cold it is here. Um, Mary Ellen is also in my town. She lives um, across town from me, but I'm sure it's just as cold where Mary Ellen is, too. So uh, let me check my notes here. We talked about sharing the um, Facebook Live and then you can get you know the drawing for the cards. And I think I'm going to do that same thing again today. Whatever cards I make today, um, I'm going to offer those up to those of you who want to share my uh, Facebook Live video. You can share it now while it's live. You can share it after if you're watching the replay. So anytime, just right down below the video, there's a little share button. Share it to the public so that everybody can see it. And um, yay, I'll put you in the drawing for the free cards. Okay, so I think that's it. So we're going to flip you over. Hopefully that didn't make anybody too ill. All right, so here's my work surface. Throw the Stamparatus in there again just because I heart this thing. Here it is in all of its glory. We've got the plates, we've got the foam pad, we've got the wonderful grid. We've got the magnets on the back. And so, yes, Stamparatus is where it's at. I'm not going to actually use it today. I maybe will use it next week after some of you guys have yours in your hands so that maybe you can follow along with me. Okay. Also, if you guys have things that you might want to see me show, like stamp sets or techniques or something like that, please leave comments about that. I'm happy to do other things than what I have planned because sometimes I don't really have anything planned. I just sort of wing it get my chair out of the way. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to work with brush-o. So I got my little bucket here. Here's my brush-o. So exciting. Oh my gosh, I forgot to get myself a piece of watercolor paper. We're also going to use the stamp set called Amazing You, which is a celebration choice right now. And we need some water and we got some other pieces here. And I need to find a piece of watercolor paper. So pardon me while I look in my drawer and try to find it. And then of course I need to cut it both the right size. Oh, what size is this supposed to be? That size. Sorry guys. Oh, I just cut it the wrong size. Well, it's fine. Okay. So I need some scratch papers. This brush oak can be kind of messy. So here is some other scratch papers and you can tell I've been loving this scratch paper. So this is a piece of watercolor paper. It measures three and a half by what did I say? Four and a half? Oh, for heaven's sakes. I just cut it too. You'd think I could remember. Yeah. Three and a half by four and a half. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use three colors of brush -o. I've got the uh, yellow, the gamboge, which is orange color, and then the brilliant red. And I am just going to sprinkle some brush -o right down the center. This is the yellow. All right. Bring in the gamboge. And I just have these kind of large Oh, push pins that I found in my stash of stuff. You know, we all have stashes of stuff. And yeah, I found those in there. And I thought, oh, they'll be perfect so I can actually get them out because I don't have any nails to like dig under a thumbtack. So I've got the yellow, then some orange, then some red. I've just got one of our Stampin' Spritzers here filled with good old H2O. Those of you that are new that are just joining us, please leave a comment. Let me know where you're from. 
Um, we were talking earlier about how flippin' cold it is here. It was 17 below this morning, which is really cold. Okay, I spritzed it with some water. I'm going to get a paper towel because I forgot one. They're not too far away, though, just back here on my messy stamp table. And I'm going to get some of this color off. Uh, there's a little bit too much down there for my liking. A little bit too much here. And I'm just going to end up letting this dry. But I have one that I did a little earlier this morning that I'm going to pull out so that you guys can actually see. Oh, Shelly, you know how I am. I'm a little bit, um, well... I pay particular attention to detail, which is a nice way to say anal. Yeah. I think I want a little bit more orange down the center here, so I'll sprinkle a little bit more orange. And you can just keep adding water, adding color to these uh, watercolor paper because it's so absorbent that it will hold a lot of water. You can also pick it up. You can move it around, let the color float where it might want to go. Just tapping off the excess. So that is part of my project. So I'm going to put my brusho away. And these brusho containers, they do come with like a safety seal all the way around them, but I had to know what was inside, so I took mine off. Now, I don't know as though I recommend doing that because these things are full of powdered color and it can make a big mess if it was to spill. So I recommend not um, opening them up, but I just had to. Okay. So I'm going to put these items to the side because we're going to let that dry. Put these back here where you can't see any mess. I'm going to get a wipe to wipe off my hands because I don't want to get brusho all over anything else because sometimes brusho can get um, all over. Okay, so like I said, I have one that's already done that I did this morning. So here it is. Uh, Mary Ellen, yes, definitely called a personality. <laughs> I love that. I also have some Peekaboo Peach and some Calypso Coral cardstock. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some stamping on this piece here. So I'll get that. I need some black ink. What did I do with it? Oh, I think I was going to use it in another project. So I moved it around. You guys ever do that? Oh, whoops, that's gray. Maybe I didn't use it. Maybe, oh, ha. Uh, I didn't use it, I used gray. So we're gonna get our basic black ink out here. This is our archival black ink. Also gonna get a scratch piece of paper because I just changed my grid paper and it's so nice and pretty and not stamped on, so. Okay, so I'm gonna use the, like I said, the Amazing You stamps and I'm gonna use this flower image here and some of the greeting pieces. So I'm gonna ink this up in the black. I'm just going to kind of stamp it down here in the corner a couple times and then up here in this other corner. Oh, hopefully, oh, oh the camera's wiggling all over. So sorry about that. I will try not to wiggle so much. Okay, and then I have my greetings. I put them on the same block. So I have the You Are Simply Amazing here. I just kind of squish them all together on the same block. So we'll ink that up. All right, and I'm going to stamp that about, about right there. Yay! All right, put the ink away so I don't make a mess because I have been known to make a mess. All right, so then I'm going to add it to a piece of Calypso Coral that is just slightly longer. It's the same width. It's the three and a half. Oh, come on, glue. And since I'm using... Oh, maybe my glue is clogged. Oh, we've got another one. I'm using watercolor paper, and so it, it gets kind of bowed um, as it dries. And so I'm going to use the liquid glue because I want it to stick really well around the edges. I don't want it to curl up um, just because that's the nature of watercolor paper. When you add water to it, it will buckle and bow. And then if you don't use a good adhesive, sometimes it can uh, look yucky on your paper. So, all right, so this is the same width as my Calypso Coral layer. It's just a little bit shorter. All right, so we're gonna press that down all the way around, get a nice adhesion there. All right, then I've got a card base of Peekaboo Peach. Fold that in half. I'm struggling to see here, I don't have my glasses on, so 
that's always helpful. So I'm going to layer this onto this, but I first wanted to add a little bit of our Calypso Coral Ombre Ribbon. I thought that was kind of cool with the brusho having all the different tones in it and everything. And so if you've never seen me do this, here is a trick. I need a bottle. So I like to use just, this is an old Stampin' Mist bottle. It's empty. I just use it for this purpose. And so I'm just going to wrap my ribbon around the bottle and I'm going to tie it into a knot. So I'm going to go left over right and under, and then I'm going to kind of flip my ribbon so that it makes a nice, um, nice flat knot there. Bring this piece to the front, wrap this one around it through the hole. And I'm only going to pull on the right hand side and look at that perfect knot right there, right in front of you live and in person. Okay. So now I need some scissors, trim off that little guy there, trim off this other side. Oh, actually, I think I want this one just a tiny bit shorter. So I really like this ribbon. It actually comes in three different colors. It's the, got the Island Indigo and the Lemon Lime Twist. We grab them because they're really pretty. So here they are. So you can see the color gradation on those is really quite striking. Got the coral one here. So we've got all three of these. Very pretty. Okay. Oops. That was really loud. So now I have a loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of measure where I want it to go. I want the knot to be about right there. So I'm just going to come out with my scissors and trim that off. And then I'm just going to wrap it around my card. So that is a little, another ribbon sheet. Girls, I am full of ribbon sheets. I just love cheating ribbon because ribbon looks so nice on projects, but some people really struggle with using it. Um, and so if I can help you at all with any tips that I've learned over the years, I uh, love to share that kind of stuff. So, all right. So if you're liking this so far, throw me some hearts or a thumbs up or tell me that it's good. Tell me if you hate it, tell me you hate it. That's fine. All right. So we've got that. That's going to go on there and I'm going to add it with some Stampin' Dimensionals. To the back, uh, probably four or five in the middle there. And again, if you just press your fingernail or almost fingernail, pretend fingernail. Hello, Sandy. Ooh, Mary Ellen says I need to do a video on ribbon sheets. That is a really good idea. I probably should. Okay, we've got the dimensionals on there and we'll do that. And there it is. All right. Here we are. There it is done. Brusho along with the Amazing You stamp set and some basic black ink. So pretty simple card. And I have another one here that I did a couple days ago. So when you're using Brusho, you never get the same look twice. So it is so cool to see those side by side and how different they are, but yet how um, alike they are. So there is my first project for you guys. Glad you liked it. I'm gonna put these things away. So this is one of the cards. Somebody's going to win. Put that there so I don't forget that that's a winner card. Okay, moving on to our next project. I'm going to do a little housekeeping here because I kind of like to pay particular attention to detail and I don't like a mess. Okay. Our next project is going to use the basket folder. Now this isn't the project, but I did want to show you a fun little thing that I've learned with the basket folder. It makes a super cute apple pie. Doesn't that look amazing? Hello, Julie. Thank you for joining me. Hello, Sangeeta. How are you? Um, and I also used the Tutti Fruity Designer Series paper that has the apples and pears on it, which I thought was super cute with the pie. A little greeting, a tiny bit of washi tape. Now this ribbon here, you're thinking, wow, that's really pretty, Barb. We don't sell that. Uh, yes, we do and we don't. Stampin' Up! sells vanilla metallic edged ribbon. And I just colored that with a Cherry Cobbler Stampin' Blends marker. So I can make this any color I want. And I wanted to make it Cherry Cobbler. So there's a cute card using the folder. But like I said, that's not the card we're going to make today. So let me find my papers. All right, we're going to use some sweet, ugh, sweet sugar plum, which is actually going to be retiring um, at the end of May. So this one, along with Flirty Flamingo, Emerald Envy, Peekaboo Peach, and Dapper Denim are all going to be retiring. And everything that's related to those, any ribbons, anything else will be retiring. Okay, got some black. Got a strip of rich raspberry. I've got a piece of our Springtime Foils Designer Series paper. You guys know all about this. I've done this in some past Facebook Lives. 
let me grab a couple things here so I can show you. This is my latest creation with these papers. So I actually started with this paper here and then I just colored it um, the two different shades of Daffodil Delight, two different shades of Old Olive, and then the background with the pool party. And then I created an eclipse card out of this. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to link the video for that card right up there. Um, if you're watching Facebook, you can go to my YouTube channel and uh, check out the video for that. So that is some of the springtime foils paper, which is also free with a $50 order during celebration. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color this uh, piece of paper here. And so I'm going to use my light Rich Razzleberry Stampin' Blends. And I'm just going to color every other white, oh, excuse me, or every other, every stripe. How did I do that? Every other. So I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to color this one. And I'm just going to do every other one of these. Now, if there was some way to speed this up, wouldn't that be helpful? But there isn't, so you're going to have to watch. So, has anybody else um, joined us? Let me just check real quick. I don't think so. Again, if you're just joining us, please leave me a comment. Let me know where you're from. Please like and share the video. I am giving away all the cards that I make today um, to somebody who shares the video. So, please do that. It's very helpful. And I want to help other people stamp. So, that's what I'm here for, to teach you guys how to stamp. And, of course, hope that you'll order because that's, that's how I make my money. This is my job. Stampin' is my job, and I have been stamping uh, for a job for 15 years in April, which I can hardly believe that it's been that long. You know, I signed up, like many uh, demonstrators do, just to get a discount on products that I love because I was, I'm a stamper, you know, and I signed up. I had no intentions of doing anything with it except buy some stuff for myself, and then I was contacted by a friend of mine here in town. And she said, oh, I see you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Would you be doing, willing to do a party for me? And I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me right now? I was terrified. Um, so I consented to do it. And she was a wonderful hostess. She had a lot of people there for me. I booked a lot of parties off of hers. And that was the beginning of Stamping being my job. And so I couldn't be more excited. So thank you, Missy. I love you. And thank you for starting my journey. Okay. So here is the piece colored with the marker. Um, I'm going to take this, strip, this piece of black. This is just a four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to run it through my Big Shot machine. Thank you for sharing it from New Mexico, Sangita. Thank you so much. And Sandy also. So this is basic black. And where's my folder? Here it is. Now this folder is new to the celebration uh, earnings uh, little catalog. This folder along with the Blossoming Baskets stamp set, which is what we did last week when we made this card. We've got the folder and the basket stamp set. That's a bundle um, that you can choose for free with a $100 order. So, but I'm only using the folder on this particular card. Now this piece of black, I'm going to spritz it with some rubbing alcohol. This is just your cheap 89 cent rubbing alcohol you can buy at Walmart or wherever. And I'm going to spritz this before I actually run it through. So I'm going to do this off camera because I don't want to spritz everything on the table with alcohol. And then I'm going to place it inside the folder Try to line it up, and then I'm going to run it through my Big Shot machine. Oops. Okay, and the reason I'm using alcohol is because it um, it will evaporate more so, like water doesn't evaporate. Okay, so I'm going to run this through the machine. And here is my sandwich. This is our new Big Shot platform. If you are currently ordering Big Shots, this is the platform you get. Um, otherwise, you can use your other platform, just open it up all the way. So we've got the platform, the folder with the paper, and then one cutting pad. And I'm going to run that through my big shot back here. So I should sing a song while I'm doing this, but actually it doesn't even take that long. Oh, and I just dropped it on the floor. Okay, so here is my piece of cardstock, and I'm hoping that the camera is picking that up. It's amazing. Oh, thank you, Donna. Donna said I do a good job. Donna's one of my very favorite customers, and she lives like two blocks from me. Okay, so this is a little bit damp still from the alcohol, so I'm going to let that dry. Oh, yay, Sherry, yes. If you missed it, missed, bleh, missed it with alcohol, it gives a way better impression to your um, die cuts. 
And like I said, using the alcohol, alcohol evaporates, so it's not going to compromise your paper at all, whereas water um, can compromise your paper depending on how thick or thin it is. It might get a little bit pilled up, a little bit uh, wonky. So yeah, definitely use the rubbing alcohol when you're spritzing your cardstock. Okay, so this is going to go on here like so. And then I've got this coordinating strip of rich raspberry, which is a little bit too long, but that's okay. You know what? This is still a little bit damp. I'm going to use my heat tool real quick. Where did I unplug my heat tool? All right, never mind. We're not going to do that. I'm just going to wave it around. Well, we'll do something else while we're waiting. Okay, these things are going to be on the front. We're going to do our inside piece. So here's my inside layer of my card. And I'm going to use the... Where are they? The Move Me Thinlets. Now these thinlets might not be something that you ha are aware of. They create this really cool kind of window when you pull your card out of it. I don't think I have. I might. I'll try to find it here in a second. Um, it makes a really cool card, but that's not what I want to use out of this. I want to use these butterfly dies that also come in this um, die set. There's three that I'm going to use today. Where's that tiny one? Get out of there. Did it fall out? Ugh. It's stuck in there. Come out, come out, you little stinker. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to use these butterfly dies. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to cut a butterfly out of basic black. So I need some basic black cardstock scrap. Uh, where is the piece? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on together, just like so. They nest just like that. I'm going to run them through the big shot, and I'll be right back. Actually, I'm not that far away. I'm just right behind you here. So I've got my dies layered together. I've got my clear cutting pad um, on my multi-purpose platform. And then I'm going to cover it with another cutting pad right here. And then we're going to run it through. Okay. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Okay, so there it is. And I'm going to use my little bristly brush and my foam pad to get this out of here. Oops. Oh, I knew it. Okay, hold on. I should have used my multi-purpose platform, and I knew, or not that, my precision base plate. And I knew that I should, but I was trying to be lazy. To redo. So here's my precision base plate on my multi-purpose platform and now I'm going to run this through. The die is a little bit detailed so it does need the precision base plate to get a nice cut and I knew that I was just trying to uh, save some time I guess and not dig it out but saving time doesn't always work and sometimes you get you know it's just bad. Okay let's try this again. All right, now, see how much better that comes out? I just need to be careful right here at my, there we go, my little antenna. Need a pokey tool here, poke those out. Okay, so all that took way too long, and I apologize for that. So here's my butterfly. Okay, so now I need a piece of white. And what I'm going to do with the white is I'm going to use my Stampin' Blends markers. And I'm just going to scribble on this piece of paper. Okay. So I'm just scribbling some. This is the dark. What is this one? That was the dark pink pirouette. Here's the light rich razzleberry. Oh, I'm wiggling the camera a lot. Sorry, I can see it wiggling. And this is the dark rich razzleberry. Scribble all those and then maybe add the light at the bottom. Or oh, this is the pink again, sorry. And maybe the light, just in case we need a little bit at the bottom. Okay. So, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put this butterfly on this so that the beautiful colors kind of show through. So, what I need to do is I need to take the large die and we're going to cut this white piece out. So I'm just going to lay my die like this. I'm going to run it through the big shot, and then we'll layer those two together. Okay, here we are again. We've got the base plate on there because this also has some antennas on it. Okay. So here we 
go. So we've got that. And then look at that. How pretty is that when you put the butterfly over it? Yay! All right, so I'm just going to add some glue to the body back here. Or is this my glue that doesn't work? Okay, here's another tip. This is just a piece of foam that I have, and I have some needles um, stuck in here. And when my liquid glue gets clogged, I just push it in the needle, and then usually it gets unclogged. There we go. And we have glue coming out. Yay. That's just, that's what happens. Sometimes they get clogged. Oops. So I'm just lightly scribbling some glue around. There's one piece that didn't come out. Okay. And then I'm just going to layer these two together. How pretty is that? Yay! And then I'm going to attach that on the inside of the card up here in the corner. Okay. And then I have a sentiment here that says happy birthday. And I'm going to ink that up in the rich razzleberry. And I'm going to just kind of stamp that down here at the bottom, like so. And that's going to be the inside. Okay, and I also have a trick for mounting things to the inside of your card. Okay, I'm going to put these butterfly dies away before I lose them. So, when I have a card and I'm going to layer something to the inside of it, I go ahead and add my glue. And then what I do is... What I want to make sure is that it lines up on three sides, okay? Because the fourth side doesn't matter because you aren't going to be able to tell. So I just want to make sure it's even this side, this side, and this side. So that I have the same uh, space because here where the fold is, when the person opens the card, there's nothing, there's no difference um, in color up here. So when they open it, even if it isn't lined up right in there, no one's going to notice as long as these three sides are lined up. So there's another tip for you guys. Okay. Back to this, our basket weave, we've got the front. I'm going to add a strip of rich razzleberry here across the front. And like I said, it was a little bit too long, but that's no big deal, I can just cut it off. So let's hope this is centered. Again, with my eye, my cataract, it's difficult to tell sometimes what's going on. Oh, I saw Kathy on here. Hello, Kathy, long time no see. My friend Kathy moved away from here. She moved to where it's nice and warm which isn't 17 below, right, Kathy? Hello, Gwen, how are you this morning? Okay, so this is gonna go on the front. Add some of this. Again, since there's a lot of texture on this folder, um, I do wanna use my liquid glue to attach it to my car just because I feel like the liquid glue will help it stick a lot better. Uh, perhaps fast fuse would also work, but I'm just a liquid glue gal, so there you go. Okay. <laughs> Kathy says she misses us, but not the cold. Yeah, I don't blame you. All right, so this is going to go on here with, I think we're going to do some dimensionals. We'll go uh, three. Oops, those might just stick together. Oh, we got four. That's all good. All right, again, dig your fingernail, or if you don't have a nail, just the tip of your finger into your um, dimensionals. It will come off a lot easier. That's another little tip. All right, that's like that. Okay, we're almost done with this card, I promise. I need another piece of black. Thankfully, my um, cardstock's right here. So I just need another piece of black because I'm going to cut off my sentiment for the front. And I'm going to use the Celebrate You Thin Wits. There's three of these in the package. These are also a celebration choice um, this season. And I'm going to die cut the Celebrate out of black. So. I'll turn around, so I'm using my multi-purpose platform and my precision base plate again so that the word will come out. Okay, so we're going to use our foam brush and our mat, and that comes out pretty darn easy, which makes me happy. And then I'm just going to add some glue uh, just a little bit to the sides of this. I don't need a whole lot. As long as I get a little bit on a few pieces here, it's going to work good. And that's going to go right across the middle, like so. And then my final trick is to 
to use this tiny little butterfly die here on a scrap piece of, what do you call that color? Sweet sugar plum. And I've already done it. So I have one here in my little handy dandy bag. In fact, I have a few just in case I uh, struggle with my placement. Let's hope I don't. So here's my little butterfly and I need my rich Razzleberry ink again. And I know I put it away. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to try to ink that up just a little bit, and I'm going to try to stamp it onto uh, one of these little die cuts. It's not too terribly difficult because I can see through the stamp. Yay, it worked. So happy. All right. And I've got some mini sequin trim here. This is actually a card that my Big Shot at Home gals are going to receive in their packets this month. But they're going to receive it in um, blue tones rather than the purples. I'm looking for some glue dots here. So I've snipped off a tiny bit of our mini sequin trim. Ugh, I'm going to press it onto a glue dot. And now this is another tip. Some people don't realize this. If you press your um, whatever ribbons, embellishments onto the glue dot and then lift them off, um, that's a lot easier than trying to pick the glue dot off and then use it that way. So if you just press it on there, it'll come off. It's all good. Okay, so we've got that. I've got the glue on the back and I'm just gonna stick that right up there. And there it is, my finished card, yay! Oh, I love this card. This is so pretty. And then you open it up and look at that butterfly. It's so gorgeous. All right, girls, that's our second project for the day. So if you liked it, throw me some hearts or thumbs up, or if you hated it, throw me an angry face, whatever works. Okay, so this is another card that someone's going to win. Remember, share the video to your timeline, and uh, somebody next week's going to win all the cards that I make. All right, so give me a quick sec here to uh, clean up some of this mess. Oh, here's my other one. This is the one that my gals in my Big Shot class are making. They're making the blue one, so I hope they like it. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do that. Let's do that. That is actually um, some washi tape. It's the Myths and Magic washi tape, and this stuff is so sparkly and pretty, so glittery. So let's try it. Let's see if I can get this on after the card is made. I think I can. Struggle is real. Note to self, people. Do this before you finalize the card. Because then you can trim it off so that it actually looks nice. Okay, we're going to wing it, and before I actually mail it to you, I will trim it off so that it looks nice, okay? I forgot I wanted to do that. Add this tiny little strip of glimmer paper up here. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. Like I said, before I mail it out to you, I will do some expert trimming and get that excess off for you. So now it's finished. So here they both are. Yay, you'll get this one. I'm keeping this one. Okay. I'm going to clean up some stamps here, move some ribbons out of the way, uh, and get my next bucket for my next project. And while I'm sitting here cleaning up, did you guys know that the paper pumpkin kits are arriving? So if you are paper pumpkin subscribers, I'm sure you've been receiving your paper pumpkins, and that's always exciting. Love paper pumpkin. And that leads me into next month, you guys. Um, if you haven't been a subscriber before, or you have, and you want to come back and try it, everyone's going to get a free gift in their paper pumpkin kits. And Stampin' Up! is telling us that the value is going to be between uh, 6 and $8. And it's a product, not something that we sell, but we sell something similar. Now, all that means is I don't have any idea what the, pro what the freebie is. But knowing Stampin' Up!, I know it's going to be amazing, so I'm excited. Okay, guys, Ugh, look at all this mess. People that pay particular attention to detail do not like that. That's me. All right, scooping this stuff into the trash, not my die. Oh my gosh, remember a couple weeks ago when I couldn't find my die? Yeah, it was in the garbage. Maybe I should quit cleaning so much and then I wouldn't throw things in the garbage. Haha. -ha. Okay, next project. Where's my bucket? Okay, we are going to use the Sweet Soiree um, embellishment kit for this project. Got some papers here, got dye, got some enamel shapes, I've got some ink, I've got some markers, a little piece of paper, and some stamps. Okay, I think we've got everything out here now. 
All right, so to start with, I've got a little strip of paper from the Sweet Soiree um, Designer Series paper package. And this paper is really cool. All the sheets have some silver accent sheets in it, along with just a random pattern, you know, just non-metallic accents on the back. So thanks, you guys. I appreciate the love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I've got a tiny strip here that we're going to use on the card. And then here's the embellishment kit. Now, it doesn't come in one of these boxes. This is one of our wood mount cases that I just threw um, all the stuff in. It does come in like a little uh, cute little acetate box, which is fine. But I like to be able to see everything so I can open it up and just oogle and ogle over everything in here. Okay, so you get some vellum pieces, which is one we're going to use this one today. So I'm going to pull that out. Here's some vellum leaves. Um, some more, you get a bunch of numbers, so you could, uh, you know, make a special card for somebody turning a specific age, like my mama is turning 85 this year, so shout out to her in May. We also get some really cool die cuts with the silver accents. You get the skinny silver washi tape, these adorable little tassels, some clothes pins, ooh, more die cuts, more die cuts that I put in the little box so I don't lose them, and then this really super pretty velvet scallop trim in the marina mist, okay? So I'm going to close this up. Now, you guys, if you can't watch the video live or all of it, you can come back and watch it later. It'll be up on my channel for, well, forever. Let's just go with that. So you can always come back if you can't stay. Because uh, sometimes I know I babble on for a long time. <sighs> Scratch paper on the floor. Okay, so I'm going to work with this little die cut here. And it's made out of vellum and it's got some silver accents on it. So I want to color it. So I'm going to flip it over so the back side is showing. And I'm going to add some color with just some regular Stampin' Write markers just to the back, okay? The reason I'm doing this is because uh, these kind of markers do not dry um, all the way on vellum. So if you ever want to color on vellum, always do it on the back. So a lot of times you can like do some embossing, heat embossing of an image, and then flip it over and then add your color because on the front side, it does look really pretty. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Okay, so that's our Daffodil Delight. And uh, we've got some old olive here. I probably, maybe I could have used pear pizzazz, but I didn't, so whatever. All right, trying to make sure I'm seeing the leaves because again, I can't see with my silly cataract. Trying to get all these leaves green. It's kind of nice on the back of it because if you go outside the lines, it doesn't really matter, which is kind of nice. Okay, and then we're going to come in with the Marina Mist back here. Uh, the bottom parts of these pretty flowers. And then I thought these little things, I don't know what they are, but they're adorable. And I think I'm going to get one more color. I think I'm going to get Soft Sky also and add just a little bit lighter color up here at the tops of these flowers because i think that'll be kind of pretty okay and then maybe some crushed curry for the center of this kind of daisy looking flower here okay so what do you guys think of that actually i think i need a little more i didn't quite get this all the way colored Okay, so here we go. Mary Ellen is feeling horrendous. She's going back to bed. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary Ellen. Feel better and come back and watch later. Okay, so there is that done. And now I did use one of our stitched circle framelits to die cut this little piece here. And here's another tip for you guys. Whenever I do die cutting, um, not always, a lot of times when I do die cutting, I'll get like little edges on here, like little fuzzies. If you just take one of these kind of sanding block things, which I believe you can get from like a beauty supply store, I believe nail technicians use these uh, for filing. It just really is helpful and it'll just take all that um, excess little fuzzies off. Okay, there's a tip for you. All right, so I'm gonna layer this onto this piece here. Now, vellum is a little bit tricky because you can see through the back. I mean, vellum, if you put adhesive on this, you're gonna be able to see it. So I'm gonna be kind of strategic with where I put my adhesive. I'm gonna put some adhesive on the back here of this little circle. And then right here, these little silver parts were kind of solid on the front. So I'm going to put that like that. 
and we'll just press that down onto our white circle just like so okay so move that away and move my scratch paper out of the way here so I have got a piece of whisper white thick cardstock and I have scored it in the middle at five and a half and I need a bone folder and I'm gonna just do that and then I've got a layer of whisper white that is four by five and a quarter and I'm gonna put that on there this is gonna go here I thought I would add a little bit of this ribbon to the front of this and I'm gonna use tear tape adhesive if I can find it around here uh, oh I found it these days guys I will give you a tour of my stamp room it's usually fairly clean because I don't like it if it's not he <laughs> okay I'll show you my stamp room one of these days okay so I'm just gonna put this oh about like so and I can just tear this off with my fingers Okay, press that into place and peel that up and then we're going to add this cute little scallop velvet ribbon right along that tear tape adhesive and then I've also got this little piece of designer series paper that I'm going to add right above and I already kind of flagged the end there so that it mimics the ribbon Okay, get that. I need some scissors. Oh, I probably need some other scissors to get that ribbon cut off. Okay, so we've got that. Our main little focal thing here. How do we want it? About like so, probably. We need some dimensionals. Put some dimensionals on the back. Oh, good lord, I'm pulling off way more dimensionals than I need. Okay. Do that, do that. Oh, I didn't did I get it off. Yeah, it's sticky. Okay. I think we're going to do it about like so. Okay. And then our last thing, I've got some stamps here, and they come out of this cute little stamp set called Tabs for Everything. There's lots of greetings in here. There's lots of tiny little pieces, and it coordinates with our tab punch um, so you can make tabs but I'm just gonna use the stamps here that says you're fabulous because you guys are all fabulous all right here's my basic gray ink and we're gonna try to do this and now that I'm thinking about it why do I do this every single time I go live at home when nobody's watching me stamp I don't have any issues but when I'm live I seem to do this kind of silly stuff which is I um, should have stamped before I put everything on here, for heaven's sakes, but I didn't, so what are you going to do? Okay, so we're going to try to wing it. We're going to hope that we can get the your... Ah, yes. Okay. And then the fabulous, we're going to put right below the your. Try to make it straight. Ha! Ah, ah, so close. So close. Can we get that, do you think? No, but what I'm going to do is whoever wins this card, you're not getting this card. I'm going to redo it and you're going to get a pretty card. So there's a tip for you of something not to do. Don't try to stamp, but you know what? Maybe we can just fix it right now. I'll show you how I'm going to fix this. Pretty simple. I'm just going to cut this off. So I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut the dimensionals here so that I can get them off. You guys know I'm all about screwing up and fixing stuff, right? You've been here before. You know how barb works. Yeah. Okay, so, and I used the tear tape, so I should just be able to easily peel the ribbon off. No trouble. Got it. That little piece of card stock, we're just going to cut that off. Okay. I could, always, I could cut a new one, but let's just say that you didn't have any more paper and you had to salvage it. So I'm just kind of going underneath the piece of paper with my scissors to get it off. And I didn't use too much glue, so it's going to work pretty good. Okay, 
So we have the ribbon, we have the piece of paper, we have our thing. All I gotta do is cut a new piece of white and we're gonna be golden. So let me cut a piece of white. My paper cutter is right here next to my video area. Okay, so this is a do-over. Don't do anything until I stamp first, right? That's what I said, okay. So here we go. And if nothing else, guys, share the video so people can learn what not to do. And actually, I'm gonna do the fabulous first, okay? So everybody, this is what you don't do. You stamp first and then you assemble. That works better. What is with my U? Oh, there's a piece of fuzz in there. That isn't gonna fly. Okay, we're doing this again. Actually, I'm not going to use that either. I'm going to get a new one. Okay, I swear we are going to finish this card. Okay, I'm getting the fuzz out of my U. Okay, here we go. Ah, <gasps> yes! Success! Yay, success! Hello, Julie, I'm glad you didn't miss us. And thank you for sharing the video, I appreciate that. Okay, you're fabulous. All right, now we can start this again. We can stick the tear tape adhesive on there. So we can put the ribbon down. Okay, here's the ribbon again like so. We're going to add, see you can tell I cut that off, but no one's going to know that I did it. Well, whoever gets the cards are going to know. <laughs> so sorry about that, but you won't be able to tell. All right, we'll cut that excess off. We're going to add some new dimensionals to this piece, and I'm just going to put them where I don't have dimensionals right now, so that's going to work just fine. Okay, hello Karen, how are you? Yeah, I do this a lot, but not always live on uh, <clears throat> live, live TV, on a live show. I don't always screw up on a live show. Well, that's not really true. You guys have seen me screw up plenty. Okay, no one would even know I screwed it up. It looks fabulous, it looks amazing. Get some glue on there, add it to, this is my Whisper White thick card base. I do like thick card bases. They just hold up really nicely and when a person wants to stand them up then they work really good okay so we've got that and my final thing is i wanted to add some of these um enamel dots these are what are they called metallic enamel shapes i have all my or all my enamel shapes in this same container and so i am going to use where are they i just saw them earlier today when i was figuring out what i was going to do for you guys uh yes right here okay so i'm going to pick them off with scissors because i don't have any nails Oh, I just got two. All right, we're gonna stick one like right here. Get that one off my finger. Put one there. And our last one. Oh, maybe we should use a heart. Hearts are pretty. Now that one I think I can do my nail with. How about that? Okay, there it is. Salvaged, finished, done card. Wow, that took a long time. Okay, it wouldn't have taken that long if I hadn't have messed it up. So, yes. Oh, happy alterations. Perfect, Julie. That's what I did. I just had a happy alteration, you guys. So, that is my third card. And I think that's what I'm going to be done with today. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for sharing the video, liking the video, all your comments. Again, if there's something you want me to show you, um, if there's something you don't know how to use, a product we sell, and you're like, oh my gosh, I have this, I don't know how to use it, or something you're thinking about buying that you don't know how to use, I am happy to try to help you with that. So just leave some comments below if there's something you want me to show you. I'm live every Wednesday, 10 a.m. or 10 a.m. my time, which is Mountain Time, 12 o'clock noon Eastern Time. Um, if you're looking to join my team, uh, let me know if you have any questions, barb at barbstamps.com. I've got the host code, the Stamparatus reservations. Oh my gosh, you guys are so many things. Free gift with purchase for a paper pumpkin next month. And thanks again, you guys, and have a great day. Great week. See you next time. Bye-bye.